Today I'm going to walk you through Turk's IOLink AOI system that provides full control of IOLink devices from within a Rockwell PLC project using a specific catalog file. So to start, I have an 8 IOL, TBN block, and a PS Plus pressure sensor. Both are factory reset to out-of-box settings. So as you can see, the 8 IOL is expecting an IOLink device on every port, and the PS Plus is expecting to be able to sense what type of analog signal the block expects. Spoiler alert, block has no analog, so it's not very happy right now. So what we need to do is we need to change some settings on the TBN and the PS Plus in order to make these kind of talk nicer to each other. And we could easily enough do that manually through the Turk Automation Suite. However, it would be very beneficial to have a nice way to handle this directly from the PLC project, not need any additional steps or software. And this would also have the added benefit of giving us seamless device replacement on the end machine were something to happen to these devices inside of manufacturing. So the very first step we need to do is we need to set the IP address of the TBN. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set, use Turk Automation Suite to do this. So I'm going to scan the network and we're going to see that we are at a 192.168.1.254 default and I'm gonna set this. You can set the IP address of a Turk IO block in a variety of different ways. You can do this via the rotary switches if you're wanting to stick with the 192.168.1 out of the box. You can set the last octet. You can also use boot P, DHCP, Profinet naming because we're multi-protocol. But again, just I'm gonna use the Turk automation suite. So let's zoom in a little bit. You can see that the bus LED went from blinking red and green to just green. This indicates that we're ready for PLC communication. So let's go ahead and switch back to the PLC and we'll get that set up. So I've got my Studio 5000 open here. A catalog file is nothing but an existing project that is developed as an L5K pro uh, file which has significantly less version control issues than trying to uh, share ACD files between versions. And when you open it as an existing project, what it does is it will import it into an ACD. So that's what I have right here. This is my, uh, the, the project that will open up. And then I have my PLC project. Today I'm going to be using soft logics for this. And from a catalog file, I'm going to set up my TBN. So I'm going to grab the physical device and drop it in my Ethernet IP network. I can name this however I want, right? So we'll call it OP1. Uh, let's see, we're not going to IP address it as 50 at OP100. So OP50 IO link, shall we? All right, there we go. Everything else stays the same. That's one of the beauties of the catalog file is everything is ready to go. Now, the new thing that we just started doing is going to be the add-on instruction for the end device, the block itself. So let's go ahead and bring that into the project. And what the add-on instruction is going to do is it's going to manage all of the uh, I data, O data, C data, and it's going to also manage the message instructions necessary to go down into the IO link device and set it. So that's what's going to allow us to make this PS Plus even happier and also set units and ro rotation display and all that good stuff. So with every AOI, we need to give it a uh, unique name. So I'm going to call this OP50 IOL. Common data is interesting. This is the glue that is going to allow the add on instructions to talk to each other. Uh, let's see. And then we also need read uh, message instructions available for being able to read and write to the device. Okay. And then we need to point it to give it the data that that needs. So I called it op 50 IO link. And then we need I data and O data. There we go. Now what we need to do is we need to declare our instances. You can do this in a couple of ways. You can right click and go new, and this will automatically fill it in with the data type that you need. Uh, but I just prefer to go control W. So we're just gonna control W that, control W that, 
and control W that. Now my errors go away, but I'm not quite done yet. What I need to do is I need to set some, uh, some things up in the message instructions. The first thing is service code. We need to set that to 4B. And then we need to set source and destination elements. This is going to be within that common data, uh, data type. And it's going to allow the device AOI to set the data necessary and receive the data necessary from the end device. So you need to go into the common data that is for this instance of the AOIs for this IO block. We're going to set our send and receive data. And then we need to point the message instruction to the actual IO block that we need it to talk to. So we're going to do the exact same thing over here on the right message. The only difference here is it's for C for the service code instead of for B. So again, back to the common data, we're going to do our send data back to the common data and we're going to do our receive data. And then we're going to set our communication path to the IO block. All right, there we go. And let's go ahead and check our work. So we're going to download to the PLC. And we'll go ahead and bring up our image here. And what we should see is we should see the bus LED go from blinking to solid once it receives its communication. Okay, and there we go. So we've got a solid green on the bus LED. And you'll also notice that all of the red lights turned off on the IO link. That's because the AOI set our C data such that we don't expect an IO link device on every port. However, you'll notice that the light is blinking. And so we are still communicating IO link. It's just that we're not expecting it. So what we did is we actually turned off the diagnostics for the port, which will allow us to maintain a communication path to the end device. Um, but not necessarily expect it. Okay. Uh, but we can actually go and start expecting it now. So let's go back to our catalog file and we'll grab the add on instruction that we need for, Oh, we can't import an add on instruction when we're online. So let's go ahead and go offline, import that add on instruction. And we'll bring it into our project. We will declare it, so PS plus 50, because we're up 50. What port is it on? Port three, and then this common data. Remember, this common data is the glue, so we need to use the exact same instance of the common data as we did in our 8 IOL. This is gonna, let's allow those AOIs to talk to each other. And there we go, we, inst we created the AOI and we're all set to go. So we'll download this. And what we will see is we're going to see the IOLink device show up and it's going to start giving us some data. All right, so we have wrong or missing device and we have no data. Uh, let's take a look and see what's going on. Uh, one of the things that's kind of interesting is, oh, you know what? I put port three instead of port two. So it's actually expecting it to be on port three, but there's no red lights. This is going to be probably the biggest gotcha right now is the C data is set to expect the IO link device. However, the C data has not been implemented yet. The C data only gets implemented on connection of a device. So whether you disconnect and reconnect the, uh, the ethernet or if you restart the PLC or something like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna inhibit and uninhibit the module, which is gonna allow a reconnection to occur and it will then send the C data. Let's zoom in. There we go. Now we've got a red light over there. Now if I move this to our actual port, that AOI can take control And we've got a green light. Oh, and you look there is that now we actually we lost the error code um, on the PS plus and we have data. All right. So what we can also do and you'll notice that I gave it a little push 
we're at 0.27. That is 0.27 bars. Uh, if we want to make a PSI, we can just change the units over to PSI. Now we're at 3.8 PSI. And let's say I wanted to face it the other way. I can do that. Save this with the project. Everything's good to go. And those settings will automatically get uh, transferred as soon as the PLC connects to the IO link block. A lot more details can go into this system, but we just wanted to give you kind of an overview of how this works. If you want to know more, please feel free to reach out or see if you can find some other videos from us. Thank you so much. Thank you.